pink and grey, zygodactylic feet with a cytosine bill. This is the pink and grey crested galah. Once upon a time, the galah was in the genera Cacatoue or Cockatoo, for it was believed that it was related to the white cockatoos. For the white cockatoos, like the long-billed corella, have quite a bit of pink. But DNA sampling shows that the galah warrants its own genera. So the current binomial name is the Eolophus rosy capilla, which really means pink crown or pink hair, like on the head. In flight, the galah is a magnificent bird. They usually fly in groups. The pink and grey just flashes in the sunlight. They like to alight on dead trees. And from here they can survey the ground looking for foraging areas. The galahs are flock birds. In urban areas, it's rare to see more than 100 birds, but they have adapted well to urbanisation. In the open woodlands of rural Australia, the flocks can number up to a thousand birds. We think of the diet of cockatoos as being of grass seed, but their diet is far more complex. Here, in the drought, you can see them eating on dry seed on the ground. Some grass seed, but because of the drought, a lot of this is just dry burr seed. Now, if we look a little closer, we can see that the birds are in fact not eating the seed from the surface, but digging with their bill into the ground after the roots of the grass. There they go, absolutely magnificent in flight. They can turn and twist like no other bird for its size. Here now is a galah in an urban area where there is fresh grass and you can see them going along looking for seed on the ground. When the flock lands in a tree, they are quite interesting to watch. They get up to lots of antics like many of the other kakatoe. Most of the roost time is spent either sleeping or feather maintenance. And feather maintenance involves scratching and bill preening. Watching a galah or even other cockatoos move from a perch down to the ground can be interesting. The most direct way is a flap of the wings and then alighting on the ground. But watch this galah. He is typical of many of the cockatoos that have a difficulty in making a decision on how to get to a place where they can feed or drink. Where there are good feeding grounds, other cockatoos and parrots can be found in the same area, but the bigger the bird, the more dominant they are. All the citizens of Australia tend to mate for life, and when they are roosting, preening takes place, and often the mate will do the preening. This is called allopreening. This feature is what describes many of the citizens as lovebirds, and the galah is much of a lovebird as any of the other citizens. Just watch the way one of them will come up and nudge the other, and then give a nice little peck on the feather, pruning it, cleaning it, getting it disentangled. When roosting in a dead tree, this feature of allopreening can be seen amongst many of the peers. Because of the short legs and stocky body, it is often said that the cockatoos walk with a waddle like a duck. The best way to get photos of a galah is at a water point, and many of the shots that you will now see will be taken from a hide or a concealment around a water point or a dam. Unlike the pigeons that can swallow, a galah, like most birds, 
has to scoop the water up into the bill, then tilt the head back allowing gravity to take the water down into the gullet. Just watch this scalar tipping his head up. If a cytosine eats just dry seed, it is very difficult to digest, unless there is water. And most parrots, glass, cockatoos, they all come frequently to water points to help with digestion. They come far more frequently when they have to feed their young, because not only does the dry seed need water for digestion, but it needs to be moisturised to allow a slurry to develop in the gullet so that these birds can regurgitate for the young. Here, a pair of galahs have come to drink. They have had a drink, and now notice that the male is pushing the female on the side. What he's trying to tell her is it's time to move. But just look at the female. She has a distended belly, and she's not too keen on moving. And indeed, she's not too keen on copulating either. The male is trying to mount her, but she is rather reticent. The reason for this is that this female galah with the swollen belly has a pathological condition. She is in essence a female with a breech. The egg is not positioned in the right direction to come out in the narrow way. It's blocking the cloaca. So she has an obstruction. And the cloaca, though it carries the egg from the oviduct, is also the terminal part of the bowel. So this bird, with an egg causing a cloacal obstruction, now ends up with a bowel obstruction. Most birds, including the galah, become sexually active at the time they build the nest, and this continues right up until the clutch of eggs has been laid. It may well be that sexual activity also stimulates the female to lay the egg. This female is not well. If this bird was in a breeder's cage, the vet could cure the problem. But unfortunately in the wild, the case of this bird is yet to be decided. One can only hope that the egg comes away soon. Notice that the male is very persistent, trying to get her to fly with him back to the nest. She has very little energy and is not interested in flying off. She is lethargic and I suspect she is very close to the point of developing peritonitis. The male just took off. In this sad story he did return and she eventually did fly off, but not very far and certainly not back to a nest. Like most citizens, it is the male that determines where to build the nest. The female will often sit on a perch close by, watching the male and seeing exactly what is going on at the hole that he finds. He usually begins by scraping out some of the dirt, clearing off the bark to get a good entrance in and out of the hole. When the galahs enter into the nesting phase, the flocks flying are much smaller. Despite the low flock numbers because of breeding, they still tend to congregate at good feeding points, like this football ball field in St George, Queensland. Eating grass seed you may think, but just watch the birds. Some of them are eating grass seed, but many of them are digging into the grass for the root. When the nest is established, one of the birds will always remain at the entrance, keeping guard and a watchful eye over the nest.
Youngalar has a lot of grey over the pink areas of the crest and the front of the chest. Look at this bird being fed. It's a young one, fed by the mother. They are fed by regurgitation. After the young are fledged, so the flocks will again increase in size. Just coming back to what defines a male and a female, anatomically, it's hard to tell apart from the colour of the eye. The male eye is dark, so just go along this water tank and look for the pink-eyed female and the dark-eyed male. The crest of a galah will go up when they're excited, but it fully retracts down over the crown of the head. Cacatuidae is a family within the order of cetiforms to which all the cockatoos belong. Cockatoos are defined by having a caressed and a carunculated periorbital eye ring. The other cytosine characters are the zygodactylic feet and the parrot-shaped bill. That is the end of this video on the Galar. We trust you've enjoyed it, and on behalf of Plumes of Oz, I would like to thank you for watching this series.